Book to movie adaptations are tricky to the point where the phrase, the book was better, has become a cliche. The book The Disaster Artist is one of my favorite books about filmmaking. It's about Tommy Wiseau, the infamous creator of The Room, and it's written by Tommy's best friend and co-star Greg Cicero. The book is not only the behind-the-scenes tale of the making of what has been dubbed the greatest bad movie ever made, it's the story of the strange, eccentric, mysterious man behind the film. So naturally, I was interested when I found out that James Franco was directing an adaptation of Greg's book. And the first question I had about the film was, what will Tommy think of the movie? We eventually got the answer, which surprised me. How closely do you think uh, James and the story captured your essence? I would say 99.9%. .9%. Since famously, Tommy only approved of Greg's book, 40%. The book came out and he called it the Red Bible. Um, and then he said he approved of it 40%. So why does Tommy love the movie and dislike the book? Is it just another strange Tommy Wiseau quirk? I don't think so. And in fact, I think the disparity lies at the heart of why Franco's movie is not a good adaptation. This video is sponsored by Audible. When it comes to adaptations, fans often get upset about small changes or inaccuracies. In a strange way, Franco's movie is obsessed with accuracy on a detail level. Many scenes are fairly close to what's in the book. This account? It's like a bottomless pit. Really? Yeah. Tommy. Yeah. And as the movie proudly shows us at the end, much care was taken to accurately recreate actual scenes from the room. Franco's performance as Tommy is also surprisingly good. You're part of my life. life. You're, You're everything. everything. I, could I could not go, go on without, without you, Lisa. Lisa. It's about as accurate an embodiment of Tommy as I think we could ask for. And yet to me, something still felt off. The disaster artist is accurate on a micro scale, but I think the changes it does make shifts the heart of the story in a way that is interesting, but ultimately detrimental to the story. The Tommy Gregg illustrates for us in the book is difficult to understand and deal with. He's complicated and fascinating. He's a stubborn hopeful who is mysteriously wealthy. Greg's depiction of Tommy is certainly caring and sympathetic, but it's also laced with honesty about the darker side of the story. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. And it's not afraid to criticize its subject. Franco's Tommy retains some of these qualities, but he ultimately distills Tommy down into a sort of underdog hero. Franco's Tommy is a quirky guy who sticks to his dream and wins against all odds. Okay, enough pet talk. We make movie! The Room. Yeah, The Room! Yeah, let's make a movie! Yeah. And Franco's movie celebrates that. I think that he had a very clear vision. Who is this man? Who is this auteur? The kind of sheer ambition of it is, is in incredible. Sure, it highlights some of the frustrating Tommy moments and the crew's exasperation. This set of the alleyway looks exactly like the real alleyway out there. That's right. That's why we do a Hollywood movie, right? but it does so mostly for comedic effect. While in the film, tension between Greg and Tommy is a plot point late in the second act. Don't betray me, Greg. I'm not betraying you. What I say, we do this together. Yes, we do this together, now you betray me. In the book, this tension is at the core of what makes the story so interesting. The movie displays Greg's participation and cheerleader attitude without revealing the internal struggle and self-awareness that accompanied that. In the movie, Greg is simplified to someone who worships Tommy's self-confidence. 300 miles away. 300 miles, who care? We just do it. It would take hours, man. Okay, now you draw. What? And only really second guesses things when Tommy gets in the way of his career. In the book, Greg refuses to be in the room at first, only eventually giving in much later. But you want, you want me to play Mark in, in this? Nice big role. Maybe Johnny Depp if I have a No, 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 I, I want it. I, I want the role. Missing from the film is a close examination of Greg. Why does Greg, knowing things are bad, continue to enable and support Tommy? Is he just being a good friend? Is blindly encouraging someone when you know what they're making isn't good being a good friend? It was, it was raw and intense and yeah, you really brought it, man, seriously. Thank you. Greg even questions himself and his own motivations throughout the book. We know how the story ends, and so in hindsight, it's easy to see Greg's encouragement as a good thing. 
But what if the room, instead of making Tommy a cult success, had opened him up to endless ridicule and made him more of a social outcast than he already was? The movie overlooks some of the darker themes and trauma that may have led to Tommy's creation of The Room. In the book, Tommy disappears for a while, and Greg, unable to get in contact with him, is quite worried that something bad may have happened. Tommy eventually reappears and decides to film The Room, but gone from the movie is Tommy's Dark Knight of the Soul. It's reduced to a sort of feel-good pep talk moment. Remember? I always said we were gonna push each other. Never give up on our dreams, right? Come on. And in one of the most tonally dissonant moments I think I've seen in a film in a while, Franco's movie presents a theater full of people chanting for a character to kill themselves and expects us to accept it as a positive thing. Just look at how Greg describes the story he wants to tell in the book. And I really wanted to tell a story that I felt like would, would honor that and not shrink from the darker moments of, of that experience. Compared with how Franco describes the story he's trying to tell in the movie. I read Greg's book and I love Hollywood stories. And I thought this was incredible. You know, it was a wild zany story about making this wild and zany movie. It's about, you know, outsider artists trying to make it in this really difficult business and it really moved me. Greg's book is a tragedy. It doesn't give us the happy ending. And we, the audience in hindsight, know Tommy will eventually become accepted and loved, though not in the way Tommy wanted. It's honest about the pain and hardship that was involved in getting to where things are today. Franco's movie is a comedy. It treats the story as a classic, if you dream big and work hard, you'll succeed story, but with a little twist. I never be able to make this movie without my best friend. We do it together. Hey, the room! And shows Tommy accepting the backwards nature of his success without a whole lot of struggle. It didn't turn out exactly as you hoped, but just listen for a second. How often do you think Hitchcock got a response like this? No. While the movie might be accurate about a lot of things, the heart of the story is completely different. I think it's a poor adaptation in the macro sense. This oversimplification of Tommy into a hero character, I think is obviously at the heart of Tommy's love for the film. Tommy loves the movie because it presents him in the best possible light. And I get it, it's nice to imagine that we live in a world where even if you're bad at what you do, you'll still end up successful, famous, and happy. And that's a fun story to tell, and maybe in this case, it's even the true one. There's another piece to this puzzle. The disaster artist, book, and movie are both adaptations of real life. So while the movie is partly an adaptation of the book, it's also an adaptation of Franco's and the writer's perspectives on the real life story. Greg's book isn't the definitive truth, and it's possible that it's colored unnecessarily dark by his personal involvement and subjective experience. This is a revealing example of just how difficult good adaptation really is. I don't think Franco's movie is a dishonest adaptation. It doesn't lie about Tommy or the story, but personally, I find the book to be much more interesting and thought-provoking. The movie wants us to believe that there's something about Tommy that makes The Room not just a terrible movie, but something special. And I agree, but the movie only explores Tommy on a surface level. And in a strange way, I feel like it's the sort of plastic, fake story that Tommy himself is so quick to criticize. I originally listened to Greg's book as an audiobook on a road trip, and the trip went by in a flash. That's why Audible is a perfect sponsor for today's video. The Disaster Artist is one of those audiobooks where I can definitely say that listening to it as an audiobook is a better experience than reading the print book. Greg Sestero narrates the audiobook himself, and he does a fantastic impression of Tommy's voice that's at least as good as Franco's, maybe better. It's a hilarious, poignant book that I highly recommend, and you can get it for free when you sign 
sign up for a free 30-day trial of Audible using the link in the description. I would never be able to read as much as I do if it weren't for audiobooks, and Audible is the best way to get audiobooks. I listen to audiobooks while I'm cooking, falling asleep, driving, editing videos, and basically during any activity that doesn't require me to use my ears. Audible is offering my viewers a free audiobook with a 30-day trial membership. Just go to www.audible.com slash Thomas Flight or text Thomas Flight to 500 500 and get a free book. They also have a great listen guarantee. So if you don't like a book, you can just swap it out for another one. Go to audible.com slash Thomas Flight or text Thomas Flight to 500 500 and get your free book. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date on my latest videos. As always, thank you to my Patreon supporters. They're a big part of what makes this channel possible. Consider joining their ranks at patreon.com slash Thomas Flight.